Welcome back to the So What Show, guys. <clears throat> We're coming back out of My Sister's Keeper is Your Temple in Order, my Dr. Jill Wagner. Yes, we have returned. Just like the, uh, the, the Jedi return. This Jedi is back. And we're coming out of my sister's keeper. Okay? And we are on the subject of neglect. Neglect. You see here. Maybe a study like this. Okay. One of the primary reasons, before I get started going and like share this to um, the brothers to pick up the algorithm family so we can go on and build this channel back up. Are you ready? Let's go for a ride as we float. One of the primary reasons that women neglect their health is lack of knowledge. As progressive women, many of us understand the importance of caring for and maintaining our cars and our physical appearance. Physical appearance and our cars. Let's go on and um, screen share on that. Excuse me. <clears throat> Okay, let's look at that. Our cars. Got one of them right there. Our cars. And physical appearance. Physical appearances. Okay. But we don't translate that concept into caring for our most precious gift of health. Mm. This book is designed to help you do just that. It is a guide for women, Christian women in particular, aiming to assist you in obtaining and maintaining optimal health. It will give you the knowledge necessary to make the maintenance of your physical and spiritual selves a priority. My prayer is that it will empower you with the motivation to love and care for your own sister self and encourage you to help others, help other sisters to do likewise. From sister to sister, Get yourself some girlfriends. I was an only child. Blessed with loving grandparents. But one of the most precious gifts God has ever given me is the gift of girlfriends. My grandparents took on the responsibility of rearing me when my teenage mother could not care for me. In our household, like in many others, I was taught, don't let outsiders into your inner world. Mama, my grandmother, preached that I should be kind to others. But if they were not family, I was told to treat them with a long-handed spoon. Simply put, keep people at a distance, especially other women. In a beauty salon where my aunt worked, I listened to women talk. They said that other women could not be trusted. Women would use your secrets against you. If you told them that you had a good husband or lover, they would steal him when you back, when your back was turned, brother. Meanwhile, as a little girl's maturing into grown women, we were taught to tolerate the men in our lives. Other women were not to be trusted. And 
men will be men. Let me say that again. Men would be men. I witnessed women who would tolerate a cheating or violent man. and will be suspicious of any wo woman who might attempt to draw near to them. On the other hand, I also saw the old same women embrace and comfort each other when they fell on hard times. When a husband died or left, or when a child was in trouble, the women I grew up around would band together. Despite their past misgivings about one another, I watched how they helped each other survive the pressures of the world and the pressures of women who. Much of the time I spent with my grandfather was doing his trips to the barber shop. I'm not cutting my hair till I got 50,000 in the bank. Think about that. The barber shop. Let's go on and look at a barber shop. Give us a little bit of difference in the room at the moment. Yeah, barber shop. Yeah, that right there, that part. Mm-hmm. Barbershop. And if you don't know, um, Brother Sean Item, I think I, that's how you say it, I hope I ain't butcher his name, I-D-O-M, has an ebook out on how to start your own barbershop. I know it's a lot of brothers out here be working for people who want to start their own business and can't start their own business. As far as in the barbershop, I've been around some barbershop guys and he was the owner. I'm like, when are you going to expand? He was like, shoot, I'm good right where I'm at. I'm like, but do you, why would you not want to expand? And you got these good other guys up in here good and cutting hair. Why don't you help them start their own business? He wasn't thinking like that. But then as I was talking to him, he was like, yeah, I guess I could help them start their own business. Well, Brother Sean, I don't, or I don't, or something like that, um, has an ebook out. And you can get that book from digital um, real estate at digitalforreal.com. You can also um, get in touch with him through the ABS tribe. That's the absinstitute.com. Okay. Or through me. Just hit me up on my comments and I will get that information for you so you can start your own business in barbershop. Be like Ice Cube and own your barbershop. Be like uh, Queen Latifah in barbershop and own your own salon. <laughs> so let's get on to it. Much of the time I spent with my grandfather was doing his trips to the barbershop. The conversation that took place between the men there were totally different instead of specifying the reasons why they could not trust other men. The men at the shop spoke about the things that they had in common. They bounded through their common job problems and interests in sports, cars, and yes, women. Sports, cars, and women. Let's look at this, sports. You know, the men like talking about them sports. Oh yeah, like talking about that right there. Them sports, mm-hmm, what else? Them cars, these right here, them things right there. They like talking about them nice fine cars and cars they just got and what else? These right here, beautiful women. They experience camaraderia through competitive conversations about what made another man 
the man. The conversations of those women and men bore stark differences. Unlike the women, men never talked about deep wounds or hurts, and they were less likely to discuss life situations on an emotional level. When the men in my life did discuss personal issues or circumstances, it was more in the way of relying the play-by-play -play facts of what happened during a particular situation. For the most part, the conversation remained on a superficial level, but both genders developed a much needed bond during good and bad times. The adults, and particularly the women, that shaped me during my coming of age taught me the necessity of having strong, healthy relationships with other women. As a physician, I know the importance of maintaining personal health. As a woman, I've experienced the benefits of having great girlfriends I can turn to during life's challenges. My sister's keeper, bridges, these important aspects of our lives. As we journey through this book together, just consider me a sister who desires to pour out what she knows about health and what she's learned about sisterhood. I hope this book imparts to you some life altering wisdom, help change your mindset. I pray God's grace, mercy, and guidance upon you and may God bless you as God has blessed me with some truly anointed girlfriends. We are sisters, Dr. Jill, Dr. Jill. All right there, family. And with that being stated, next time we come out of this book, we'll be on water. Ain't that something? Going into that of the water. Well, family, if you liked what you heard, let me show you a picture, sister, Dr. Gia, right here. You can go get this book. It's a beautiful book. This is my second time reading, or third time reading this book. This is a beautiful book. It's purple, royal, and gold, with black sisters on the front of different shades. It's a beautiful book. This book right here. I suggest you go get it, sisters. Don't wait for me. Go on ahead. Y'all already be ahead in so many things and jobs and um, bank accounts and things of that nature and mentality and growth growing up. Go on and surpass me and other men in this book. All right there, family. If you like what you heard, please share and subscribe, like, Hit that notification bell at the top that look like it's ringing. And I'll see y'all next time. As we're signing out, keep your heads up, stay focused, and read. Peace.